Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Look out! It's a stampede! <laughs> yes, it's a stampede to the breakfast table when Mom pours out heaping bowlfuls of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice and then covers them with milk or thick yellow cream and sliced bananas or some other fruit. Yes, sirree, you rush to get a taste of this deluxe breakfast. The tender crispness and delicious nut-like flavor of Quaker puffed wheat or rice really hit the spot. Try it. Remind Mom to get Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat tomorrow for sure. Rocky Harris was what men in the Yukon called a drifter. One who appeared here and there, never filing or working a claim, and having no visible means of support. He had come to the Yukon Territory just after the United States had declared war on Spain. One day, Rocky sat in the Nugget Cafe in Selkirk, talking to a newfound acquaintance, a gambler named Slick Green. Rocky was saying, I'm sure glad I ran into you, Slick. Most of the guys I meet up here are afraid to listen to me. Hey, Rocky, it's none of my business, but uh, you must have had a dirty deal in the States from the way you talk. Or maybe you skipped out on the law. Maybe I did. You don't believe in digging for gold, eh? I figure there are easier ways to make dough. All I have to do is find them. How are you on handling cards? About average, I guess. Too bad. Maybe we sort of could have worked together. Yeah, it is too bad. But I'll have to find other ways, and frankly, I'm not too particular. Maybe if you weren't skipping the law in the States and was free to go back there, I... I could throw some easy money your way at that. I didn't say the law was after me. How could I make that easy dough you talk about? I can't tell you about it now. Anyway, we'd have to talk private. Come to my room at the hotel tonight at 8. I'll have somebody else there to meet you and talk things over. That night at 8 o'clock, Rocky Harris went to the hotel. A few minutes later, he stood knocking on Slick's door. That's you, Rocky. Come on in. Thanks. Uh, Rocky, this is my friend, uh, Carlos. Glad to meet you, Carlos. Your pleasure is mine, senor. Sit down, Rocky. Yeah, thanks. Now, let's get the point, Slick. I'm anxious to know how I make that cash you spoke about. Oh, so the senor is not one to waste time, no? I've wasted enough time already. My cash is running low. I told Carlos all I knew about you, Rocky. I, uh... I figure he might have a few questions to ask you, though. Questions about what? About you, senor, of course. Hey, you're Spanish. Uh, let us say I'm a Mexican citizen, senor. Since you are from the States, I suppose you would resent it if I were Spanish, perhaps. <laughs> it doesn't make any difference to me, Carlos. Being a patriotic fool isn't one of my virtues. I'm out for the cash regardless of where I get it or how. I see. You are on good terms with the law in the States, senor? Sure. At least I haven't heard that they're looking for me. I came up here because I thought there'd be easy money around. Unfortunately, I dare not cross the border for certain reasons, amigo. Well, why do you care to go there? The way you talk, I figure you want to. As I said, I cannot. But it would not matter if I find someone that I can trust to go for me. You mean that's the job I get cash for? If you are selected for the job, 
Si, senor. But make up your mind. No, you're sitting here all night for nothing. But I am now the one to make the final decision, senor Rocky. Then who is? Oh, do not be impatient, amigo. We shall take a few days to become better acquainted. Then next week, you will meet her. Her? You mean a woman will make the final decision? Si, senor. I cannot tell you more until the proper time arrives. The talk is ended, senores, for the moment. Let us go to the cafe for some refreshments, eh? Meanwhile, in Dawson City at Northwest Mounted Police Headquarters, the inspector was in earnest conversation with Sergeant Preston. Sergeant, I sent for you because I feel that you are the one to take a certain assignment, one that's slightly out of the ordinary. Oh? What is the assignment, Inspector? You know, of course, that there was a reported robbery at the American consulate two nights ago. Yes, sir. I heard about it when I arrived from Forty Mile this morning. The information to, to what was actually missing hasn't been given out. Frankly, a State Department code book was taken. Oh, that's serious, sir. Yes, it is, since the United States is at war with Spain. We've questioned all those who were guests that night. That is, all but one. And who is that one, sir? A Mexican dancer named Senorita Rivilla, who was at the opera house all last week. She sailed on the boat for Selkirk the morning after the robbery. Well, if you suspect her, sir, why not telegraph ahead and have her detained for questioning? I prefer not to have her on her guard, Sergeant. I've telegraphed, have all border crossings watch, and have warned the telegraph company about taking any suspicious messages in case they tried to telegraph the contents of the code book. With all those precautions, they wouldn't have much chance unless... Unless what? I was going to say unless some American could carry it through for them. Exactly. What do you want me to do, sir? Sergeant, I know you speak Spanish fluently. I also know that with the proper disguise, you could assume an accent and pass for a Mexican or Spaniard. Well, I got away with it last year, sir, when I worked on a certain case. I remember that case. Take this wallet. Uh, it contains a Mexican passport and other credentials made out to Juan Fernando. Thanks, sir. Where'd you get this? It was found on the body of a Mexican who was knifed in the back. The body was found yesterday morning along the waterfront. I see. I'll leave it once for Selkirk, sir. Good. It's a dangerous mission, Sergeant. One you must carry through alone. I'll take King with me and leave him with the constable. All right, but keep him under cover. That dog is almost as well known as you are. Good luck and goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Sergeant Preston and King arrived in Selkirk after a fast trip. They reached the town during the night and went straight to the constable's living quarters. While he worked on his disguise, tinting his face and hands with a berry stain and changing from his uniform into nondescript clothing... Preston learned that the boat carrying Senorita Ravia had docked the day before. <sighs> Finally, satisfied with the disguise, he asked, Tell me, Dave, did the Senorita dance at the opera house last night? No. The placard says she's to start tonight. Say, you'd better get a few hours sleep. It's 4 a.m. now. You won't be able to start on your assignment until midday anyway. Well, I'll take your advice. Oh, uh, by the way, I'm leaving King here at your cabin. I don't want him to be seen around town. All right. But he won't like that, will you, King? Of course, if I get into trouble, Dave, I may need the help of you and King both. Who knows? Are you sure you can get by with it, Sergeant? You uh, look the part, but... But the uh, senor is afraid, perhaps, that I shall not speak with the right accent, no? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be darned. You sure ought to fool anyone with that kind of talking. I hope so, Dave. I'll be dealing with experts. Well, I'll grab some sleep, as you suggest, and then we'll see what will happen to Senor Juan Fernando from Mexico City. The following morning, Rocky Harris entered the cafe and approached the table where Carlos was sitting alone. Well, good morning, Senor Harris. Hello, Carlos. Is that woman ready to meet me yet? I still don't know why she didn't see me last night. She had all day to unpack. The senorita is very cautious, amigo. She did not wish to meet anyone yesterday or last night. Haven't you seen her yet? You told me she'd come on the boat. See, I have just left the hotel where I have talked to her. Yeah. Tonight, she will meet you out of the show. Hey, you mean that Senorita Rave is the woman I'm to meet? That is right, Senor. But you are to tell no one. Count on me, Carlos. I've learned to keep my mouth shut. Oh, uh, by the way, there's one thing we haven't discussed, my friend. And what is that? How much do I get for this job I might do? If you are selected by the Senorita... You will receive $500 and expenses for your trouble. Well. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Sink the main all over again? <laughs> oh. Ah, that amigo has been accomplished. Your job will not be near so difficult. But if you are selected and succeed, 
It may mean even more in the way of news for the world. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, fellas and girls, can you tell me what this Morse code message stands for? Sure, I'll bet you can guess that it stands for Shot from Gun. And that means Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The Shot from Gun's breakfast cereal the whole family goes for. Man, oh man, huge guns are loaded with premium grains of wheat or rice. And then... These choice king-size kernels are actually exploded up to eight times normal size. That makes them bigger and better tasting. Makes Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice crisp and tender as nuts in November. They are shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. And most important, they're nourishing. Good for you. Both delicious kinds furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So try delicious, nutritious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. So tasty, so easy to serve, topped with milk or cream and fruit. To get the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns, always look for the smiling Quaker man on the big red and blue Quaker package. He's your guarantee that you're getting the one and only delicious Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Now to continue. After talking to Carlos, Rocky left the cafe. A short time later, Sergeant Preston, wearing his disguise, entered and walked to the bar. He spoke to the barkeep in a loud, accented voice. Oh, yeah, this town. Is it always so crowded, senor? Well, I reckon there are more people than usual around today. They've come to see the show at the opera house tonight and get a look at that senorita from Mexico. Oh, New in town, aren't you? Si, senor. I have come on the board which dark yesterday. You sound like you might be a Mexican yourself, mister. Or maybe even a Spaniard. My passport says that I am Mexican, senor, so that is what I am, no? <laughs> Don't matter to me, eh? What do you have, mister? Oh, I shall have cafe, senor, one of the tables. All right, sit down and the waiter will see to it. Gracias, amigo. Just one moment, senor. Huh? I am sitting alone. Will you not join me at this table? Oh, but of course. I overheard what you said to the barkeep, senor. I, too, carry the Mexican passport. Baba, then we are countrymen, no? Perhaps. I am Carlos Mendoz. And I, Juan Fernando. I have not seen you in town before. Did you not hear me tell the barkeep that I have just arrived on the boat? See, si. perhaps you did. But well, you did not seem to know of the Senorita Revilla, who also traveled on the boat, Senor Fernando. What such a one as she would travel in the best manner, amigo. For one with little dinero, it is necessary to travel on the lower deck with the not so fortunate ones. <laughs> ah, ah, so that is it, eh? Uh, you will stay in Selkirk? If there is work for such as one, Fernando, Senor. Well, if one is not too particular, work might be found. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. No one has ever said that one Fernando is particular. <laughs> I understand. I shall meet you again, amigo. Huh? It may be that I shall be able to use your help in serving. Now I must go. Adios, senor Fernando. Adios, senor. That evening, just before the show started, Carlos had a short talk with Senorita Rivera in her dressing room. I shall bring the Americana to see you at the hotel after the show, Senorita. I was hoping, Carlos, that you could manage to get the code book across the border. But you have done well to find out they are watching. It is my business to find out things, Senorita. I see. Carlos, we can trust this Americano? Of course. I watch him close. He's reckless, without scruples, without honor. And there is another who may be of help to us here. One of our countrymen, I'm sure. Though he carries a Mexican passport, just as we do. So, and who is that? A senor who has just arrived on the boat. Senor Juan Fernando. Juan Fernando? But that is impossible. He could not have been on the boat. Oh, you would not have known. He was traveling below decks. Bueno. I am most anxious to meet this senor. First, after the show, I shall talk to the Americano. After that, Bring this Senor Fernando to me at the hotel, Carlos. 
But now you must run along. I must get ready for my dance. Hasta la noche, Carlos. Bueno, señorita. I shall see you later. After the show, Carlos brought Rocky Harris to the señorita suite at the hotel. After they had talked and reached an agreement, the señorita said... And now, Carlos, I am most interested to meet Senor Juan Fernando. Who's he? Not to me, says he is, Senor Aris. What do you mean? Carlos, I know Juan Fernando. He worked with me in Dawson City. But he does not seem to know you. Senor, you met in the cafe is not the real Juan Fernando. Eh? Juan is dead. What? Dead? Are you sure? But of course I am sure. I found out he planned to expose us for a big price. I had him meet me on the dock the night before the boat sailed. I left him with the knife in his back, senores. You mean you killed him yourself? See, si. Carlos, go bring that senor Fernando here. But first arrange for your friend Slick Green to follow him after he leaves. See, si, senorita. I shall keep senor Rocky Harris here with me until you return. We have much to plan. So hurry, Carlos. Within a short time, Carlos returned with Sergeant Preston. Preston noticed that though Senorita Rovia smiled as she spoke to him, there was a steely glint in her eyes. Now that I have met you, Senor Fernando, I feel that Carlos is right in trusting you. You have the proof of your identity? Oh, seguramente, Senorita. Here. See. Si. See, si, these are in good order. I am satisfied. Working with us may involve risk, Juan. Está bueno. I'm used to taking risks, senorita. This Americano is working with you, no? Sure. That means we'll meet again sometime, I reckon, Juan. I am sure of that, senor Rocky. We shall not discuss our plans here, Juan. I must talk to Carlos and Rocky about certain matters. You leave now, Juan, but at midnight, join us on the cabin boat. Carlos has docked it near the small warehouse at the south end of the waterfront. No one will disturb us or hear us there. Oh, well, no. I will be there at midnight. Adios. So long, Adios. Juan. Adios. At midnight, Slick arrived at the boat before Preston. So, so come back. Yes. I followed that hombre like you wanted. He went to the cafe. I watched through the window. He sat alone. After having coffee, he played solitaire. When he got up to come here, I beat it on ahead. Bueno. Then he met no one. That's right. Uh, he does not know he will not leave this boat alive. Uh, he's coming now. Go below and tell Rocky and the senorita. All right. Well, uh, you are right on time. But of course. We shall join the others in the cabin. In the small cabin of the boat, Rocky, Slick, and the senorita sat waiting... They all stood as Carlos and Preston entered. So you have come, one. You didn't think I would, senorita? But I was not sure. You carried a passport to death. Huh? Grab him, senor. <laughs> See, with pleasure. I got him. What is the meaning of this? Help us, Rocky. Sure. Try him, Carlos. I shall cover him with his gun. See, he's more strong, no? There, his feet are tied. Roll him over, sick. Get his arms behind his back, Rocky. There. Yeah, he sure would be a mean one to handle alone. This is a trick, eh? I don't savvy what you're Lift doing. him onto the bunk. Lift him, fellas. Yeah, he's done. So, you would come posing as Juan Fernando, eh? We shall find out if perhaps you are working with the law. Search him. Of course. So, a gun. And look here. A Mari badge. Mm. He's a Mari. He is faking the action. See. Si. Look where you have opened his collar. The darkness of his skin ends just below the throat. So he's a member of the Mounties. That's bad. <laughs> bad for him, Rocky. He thought perhaps he was more clever than Senorita Ravia. No one tries to ask with me and leaves. <laughs> you mean like that fellow Juan Fernando you knifed in Dawson, eh? Si, exactly, Senor Rocky. We shall kill this Mountie with the knife, then toss him into the river. So you killed Fernando. You'll hang for that, Senorita. I suppose he intended to blackmail you about that code book you stole at the consulate. That code book will soon be in other hands, senor. It will mean much to Spain. Yeah. I have it right here in my pocket. See, si. And by morning, Rocky, you will be heading for the border. The fact that you're all Spanish agents would have meant only deportation. 
But now you'll all be held for the murder of Juan Fernando. <laughs> he forgets that he is our prisoner. <laughs> See, and that he will soon be dead. Senor Monte, you are the only one who knows who killed Juan. And you will not be able to tell anyone. But now, it is time to finish this job. Killing a man is risky business. I'll take the risk. Why not pay me to do the job? Just leave me here alone, I'll knife him. You won't be involved, then I'll prove I'm one of you. How about it? See, si. very well, you will have the honor. We shall go up to the wheelhouse and wait. Here is the knife, Rocky. Yeah. Do not keep us waiting long. Right. Come, Carlos. As the senorita left with Carlos and Slick, Preston watched Rocky, who stood beside the bunk with the knife in his hand. Rocky laughed sneeringly. <laughs> So you thought you could put one over on people smarter than you are, eh, Monty? Preston waited tensely for the knife to plunge downward. Suddenly, Rocky bent over him. Now, take it easy, fella. I'm going to cut the cords. Thanks. I don't know what made you change your mind. I'm United States Secret Service. Carlos killed one of our operators in the States. Secret Service? Well, I'm thankful for that. They're dangerous, all three of them. I expected Carlos to meet the senorita here. That's why I didn't move in on him sooner. We both heard the woman admit Fernando's murder. You have the gold book? Yes, but they'll go the limit to get it back. Now, I have a gun. Yours is over on the table. Follow me to the wheelhouse, and we'll take them by surprise. All right. Come on. In the roomy wheelhouse above deck, Senorita Revere and the two men waited for Rocky to appear from below. The Senorita spoke. So, while we are waiting, Carlos, go on the dock and untie the lines... Then we will be ready to move out into the deep water to get rid of the body. See, si, that is a good idea. I'll be right back. There were only a few steps from the glassed-in wheelhouse down into the cabin. The cabin door suddenly opened, and Rocky came up the gangway into the dimly lighted wheelhouse. Here he comes now. Hey, someone's behind him. Use your gun, senorita. Don't do that. No! Stand back! I will shoot! He means it, too. Wait. Senorita... We don't like to shoot a woman, but it will be necessary if you don't drop that gun. For a moment, the senorita stood with flaming eyes. Then, seeing the side door of the wheelhouse easing open, she realized that Carlos was ready to take over. Suddenly, she smiled and spoke. You win, senor Monte. I shall drop my gun. Perhaps you have offered this senor Rocky Harris money to untie you, no? Perhaps. So that is why he has turned against us. But I know his type, senor. I can offer him $5,000 in American money if he will help to recapture you. You forget I hold a gun. How about it, Rocky? Want to consider the uh, lady's offer? (laughs) I'd wind up with a knife in my back like Fernando, probably. That is the way you will wind up anyway, senor. (laughs) Reach, both of you! (laughs) I saw you coming in, Carlos. I held their attention to give you the chance. Now... While you keep them covered, I'll pick up my gun and we will teach them both. Preston and Rocky, still holding their guns, had raised their hands over their heads. As the woman started for her gun, Carlos watched intently. Now move back, senorita. He didn't see a shadowy form that moved on the deck behind him. It was the great dog, King, who silently crept forward until close enough to spring. Drop the gun, senores. Then we shall... Oh, 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 I'm attacked. As King sprang, grabbing Carlos' gun arm, Preston leaped forward and grabbed the senorita. She bent over to pick up her gun. Don't touch that gun. Let me go. Take your hands from me. Here, use these handcuffs, all right? Oh, thanks, Constable. Down, down, King. Down. Watch him, boy. I got your note that you left at the cafe, Sergeant, about where to come. King picked up your scent and ran on ahead of me when we reached the waterfront. Good thing he did. Constable, meet Rocky Harris, United States Secret Service. Howdy, Constable. Glad to know you, Harris. Service? So that is it. Oh, Carlos, we are lost. You were lost, ma'am, when Sergeant Preston took up your trail. Sergeant Preston? Holy smoke, no wonder we were caught. (laughs) We both played a part, Sergeant. We were playing for big stakes. I'll want extradition papers to take Carlos back to the States. The authorities here will take care of the other two. Yes, the senoritas wanted for a murder committed in this country, and Slick will be held for attempted murder. And there are three spies your country won't have to worry about any longer. Yes, my work is done up here, Sergeant. Ah, code book's safe, and Juan's murderer is caught. Well, get them to jail now. This case is closed. In just a moment, we'll give you a preview of Friday's adventure, The Telltale Knife. 
When the whole family pulls up their chairs to the breakfast table, and you hear... Ah. Mmm. Oh, boy. That's a sure sign Mom has served heaping bowlfuls of crisp, fresh, Quaker-puffed rice or Quaker-puffed wheat, topped with milk or good, rich cream and your favorite fruit. There is nothing quite like the tender crispness, the tempting nut-like flavor of the famous wheat or rice shot from gun. These choice premium grains of wheat and rice are actually exploded up to eight times normal size to assure the greatest tenderness and crispness. At breakfast every morning, let the whole family pour out big bowlfuls of Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Let them have all they want because they're nourishing. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice give the whole family extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Remember, the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns comes only in the large red and blue package. A fine, modern package with a sealed inner lining. That wonderful lining doubly protects the flavor and crispness until the moment you serve it. For that reason, Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice is never sold in bags or bulk. Buy both delicious kinds tomorrow. Look for the smiling Quaker man on each package. Fellas and girls, now is the time to join the Junior Red Cross. Sign up and get in on its wonderful, exciting projects. Members of the Junior Red Cross pack boxes of supplies and gifts for boys and girls of other countries. Exchange albums, letters, drawings with them. Junior Red Cross members help in their own towns, their own country, by learning to fight forest fires, give first aid, prevent accidents. Yes, you'll be proud to be a member of the Junior Red Cross. Sign up right away. And now, in Mounted Police Headquarters, where Sergeant Preston is seated in the office, the door bursts open, and a man named Ben Scobie enters. Sergeant, you've got to come quick. Dave Wyatt has just murdered old Milo Perth. Dave Wyatt? Are you sure? Positive. I saw the whole thing through the window of the old man's cabin. Dave is still there, searching for something. And Milo is lying on the floor with Dave's knife in him. Come on, King. It's hard to believe Dave's a killer. But if so, it's our job to capture him. <laughs> Did Dave Wyatt really murder old Milo Perth? If not, it'll be up to the sergeant to clear Dave and find the true solution of the mystery. But in doing so, he may find himself facing the guns of the real killers. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereals shot from guns. Remember, for delicious hot breakfasts, enjoy Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. And here's why Quaker Oats is called the giant of the cereals. There's more growth, more endurance in oatmeal than any other whole grain cereal. So make your hot breakfast nourishing Quaker oats. Quaker and mother's oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice. So long. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.